Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have Jason deposits $200 into an account at the end of every month for five years. If the account has an effective annual interest rate of 12%, what is the future value of the account? Compare this to the future value if Jason were to theoretically make these deposits continually throughout each month instead. All right, and so we're gonna be calculating two different types of annuities here, one of them being a continuous annuity and the other one being a regular annuity. And so let's start with the regular annuity. We have that Jason deposits $200 into an account. So we know that the amount of the payments X is going to be equal to 200. And we know that he's making those payments at the end of every month for five years. All right, so it sounds like the payment period is going to be one month this time. And since it's being made at the end of every month, that means that we are working with an annuity immediate and not an annuity due. And so that's going to be useful to know going forward. But to figure out our number of payment periods, we have five years and these $200 deposits are being made every month for those five years. And so that means that N or the number of payment periods will be equal to those five years times 12, right? Because if Jason is depositing $200 every month for five years, then if we multiply those five years by the number of months in one year, so five times 12, that will give us a total of 60 months for those five years. And then for the interest rate, we are told that the account has an effective annual interest rate of 12%. And so that means that I will be equal to 0.12. And now that is an annual rate and so we're actually going to have to get a different rate in this case because we need to have an interest rate that is being compounded with the same frequency as our payment cycle, which in this case, these payments of $200 are being made per month. And so we're going to need a monthly effective interest rate, not an annual effective interest rate. And so let's do that now. Let's find that monthly rate. We will use the conversion formula that I is equal to one plus J, the non-annual rate to the power of M minus one, and remember that that M is equal to the amount of times that this non-annual rate occurs in a year. And so since we are looking for a monthly rate, that M is going to be equal to 12 because a monthly rate is going to occur 12 times in a year. And so we'll have that point 12, which is what I is equal to, is equal to one plus J to the power of 12 minus one. Then if we add this one to both sides, we will have 1.12 is equal to one plus J to the power of 12. And if we take the 12th root of both sides, meaning we take each side to the 1 12th power, that will get rid of this quantity to 12th power. And so then we'll have 1.0094888 is equal to one plus J. And so if we subtract this one from both sides, we will have our monthly rate J. And so if we do that, J is equal to 0.0094888. And of course there are some more decimals, but I'm going to round it off there. All right, so now that we have the amount of each of our payments, we have the number of payments that are being made, and we have an interest rate that matches the payment cycle, we can now calculate the future value of this account or of this annuity. And so the future value is going to be equal to X times the notation for the future value of an annuity immediate, which is S, and then we have the number of periods N, this bracket, and then the interest rate I. However, in this case, we'll be plugging J in for that spot where I is. This is just a placeholder for any interest rate that you would be using for the annuity that you are calculating. And so if we plug in everything we know, this will be equal to 200 times S, and then we're going to have 60, and then our monthly interest rate, J. And then if we write out what the formula is for this notation, this will be equal to 200 times one plus J to the power of 60 minus one divided by J, and so then if we plug in J over here into each part where it is found in this formula and put all that into our calculator, this will be equal to $16,068.25. And so that is the answer to the annuity immediate or the first annuity in this problem. But then the second part of our problem asks us to compare this to the future value if Jason were to theoretically make these deposits continually throughout each month instead. And so that means we are calculating a continuous annuity, which looks a little bit different because the future value of a continuous annuity is going to look like this. We'll have the amount of the payments X times the notation for a continuous annuity, which is S with a bar over it. And then we have our number of payments and our interest rate I, or whatever that interest rate may be. In this case, it'll be J again, because the payment cycle is not changing, right? The $200 are still being deposited each month, 
but they're instead being deposited continually throughout each month. And so then if we plug all the values that we know into this equation, we will have that the future value is equal to 200 times S with a bar and then 60 in our interest rate J, and that will be equal to 200 times one plus J to the power of 60 minus one divided by delta, the force of interest, or we can just rewrite that to be what delta is equal to, which is the natural log of one plus the interest rate, which in this case would be J. And so if we plug what J is equal to into this formula and calculate that in our calculator, this will be equal to $16,144.37. And so this is the future value of the annuity if it was a continuous annuity rather than a regular annuity immediate. Let's look at a different example of calculating a continuous annuity. So for our next example, we have the force of interest at time t is delta t equals t cubed divided by 10. Find the present value of a four year continuous annuity, which has a rate of payments at time t of five t cubed. All right, so this is going to require us to use a different formula to calculate a continuous annuity. Specifically, we're going to need to use this formula. We know that the present value is equal to this notation. We have A and then a bar above it, and then N, the number of payment periods, and the interest rate, which in this case is going to be the force of interest delta T, and this is equal to the integral from zero to N of E to the power of the negative integral from zero to T of delta T dt, and then dt for this integral. Right, so when we have a continuous annuity that is defined with a force of interest, delta T, this is the formula we are going to have to use to calculate that annuity. And so let's figure out what all of our variables are equal to in this case. We know that the force of interest, delta T, is T cubed divided by 10. And then we know that we have a four year continuous annuity. And so that means that N is going to be equal to four. And then we were told that the annuity has a rate of payments at time T of five T cubed. And so that's going to be our value of X or the amount of the payments, and that is equal to five T cubed. Now you'll notice I didn't write X in this formula. All we have to do to include X into this formula is to multiply E by that amount of the payments because this part of the formula inside our integral is the present value factor. And so we're going to have to multiply that present value factor by the amount of the payments. And so this 5t cubed is going to be inside this integral. And so here's what we'll have. This is going to be equal to the integral from zero to four of 5t cubed, that's our payment times e to the power of this integral. Now from this point forward in this problem to make this a little bit easier to read, I'm going to represent e with a different notation and that is this notation. We're gonna have exp and then a parenthesis and then we're just gonna write this integral inside here. And so we'll have the negative integral from zero to t of delta t, which is t cubed divided by 10. And so we have t cubed divided by 10 and dt. And that is the end of that exponent for e. And then we don't wanna forget our dt for this integral. And so we're going to have dt on the outside there. All right, so now that we have everything plugged into this formula, we now have an expression that we can evaluate to find the present value of this continuous annuity. And so in order to start solving this integral, we're going to start with this integral inside the exponent for e. And so if I rewrite the beginning of our integral here real quick, and then to integrate this function, we just have to add one to our exponent and then divide by that new exponent. So if we add one to three, we'll have four. So we're gonna have t to the fourth power divided by 10 times four. And so this will be t to the fourth power divided by 10 times four, and that will be evaluated from zero to t. And we'll write dt. All right, so let me clean up my work a little bit here and we will move on to our next step for solving this integral and finding the present value. All right, so then for our next step, we're going to evaluate this antiderivative from zero to t. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral from zero to four of five t cubed times exp. And then we are going to first plug in t into our function here. And so we're going to have negative t to the fourth power divided by 40. Right, so since we're plugging t in for t, nothing really changed there. I just multiplied 10 times four. 
And now we're going to be subtracting negative zero plugged in for t to the fourth power. So we're going to have zero to the fourth divided by 40. And then that will be closed and we'll have dt. And so now notice that zero to the fourth power will be zero and zero divided by 40 is still zero. And so this whole term right here will become zero. And so we're just gonna be left with negative t to the fourth power divided by 40. And so I'll write down that step real quick next. Okay, so then if we clean up our work here real quick, we can then move on to our next step, which is to solve this outside integral now. Notice that we have completely finished evaluating that other integral, which was in the power of our e. And also notice that I did switch back to using e rather than exp, because I think that's going to be easier to see what we are going to do next. Because in order to take this integral, we are going to have to use u substitution. Notice that we have a function here in the power of e that if we were to take its derivative, would look something similar to another function that shows up in our integrand here. And so to use u substitution, we are going to make the exponent here of e equal to u. And so if we do that, u is going to be equal to negative t to the fourth power divided by 40. And so if we take the derivative of that, we'll have that the derivative of u with respect to t is equal to negative four times t to the third power divided by 40. And so then if we multiply both sides by dt, then we will have that du is equal to negative t cubed divided by 10 dt. Right, so I just multiplied dt to both sides. And then I also reduced this term to just be negative one tenth because four divided by 40 is one tenth. And so then to make this look more like what is over here, I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 10. And watch what happens when I do that. We'll have that negative 10 du is equal to t cubed dt. And so now what we can do is replace t cubed and dt in this integral with this expression right here, negative 10 du. And so what we're going to have here is the integral from zero to four of five times negative 10. I'm gonna bring that negative 10 out front here with the other constant. And that's gonna be multiplied by e to the power of u du. And so now if we pull out this five and negative 10 to the outside of the integral, we'll have that this is equal to negative 50 times the integral from zero to four of e to the power of u du. And so if we clean up our work here, we can then solve this integral fairly easily. And so we'll have that this is equal to negative 50 times e to the power of u from t equals zero to t equals four. And it's important to remember that these bounds corresponded to t and not u. So that's why I wrote these here because we're going to need to switch this u back to what it is equal to in terms of t. But remember that the integral of e to the power of u or e to the power of x is just e to the power of u or e to the power of x. It doesn't change, which makes e one of the nicest functions to integrate. And so then if we change u to what it is equal to in terms of t, this will be equal to negative 50 times e to the power of negative t to the fourth divided by 40 evaluated from zero to four, right? And so now if we clean this up again, we can now evaluate this from zero to four. And so we'll have that this is equal to negative 50 times e to the power of negative four to the fourth power divided by 40 minus e to the power of negative zero to the fourth power divided by 40, and then we'll close that. And then notice that this exponent will just become zero because zero to the fourth power is zero and zero divided by 40 is zero. And so we're gonna have e to the zeroth power, which is just going to be one because anything to the power of zero is one. And so this will be equal to negative 50 times e to the negative power of four to the fourth power, and four to the fourth power is 256, and then we'll divide that by 40 and then minus one. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, we will find that this is equal to $49.92. And so then this right here is the present value of this continuous annuity where delta t, the force of interest, is equal to t cubed divided by 10, and the payments are five t cubed. All right, let's look at one more final example. All right, so here's our final example. We have find the future value of a two-year continuous annuity, which has payments at time t of t to the fourth power based on a force of interest at time t of delta t equals one divided by t. 
All right, so in this case, we have a two-year continuous annuity. So that means that n is equal to two, and we have payments of t to the fourth power. So x, or the value of our payments, is equal to t to the fourth, and we have a force of interest delta t, one divided by t. And so in this case, this is a very similar problem to what we just did, except now we're finding the future value rather than the present value. And so the future value formula looks like this. We have that the future value is equal to the notation for the future value of a continuous annuity, which is s and this bar, and then a number of periods n, and the interest rate, or in this case, delta t, or the force of interest. And this is equal to the integral from zero to n of e to the power of the integral from t to n of delta t dt and then dt for the outside integral. And so then just like we did for the present value scenario, we can plug in the values that we know, and our value of the payments x, which is equal to t to the fourth power, is still going to be multiplied by this e term and be inside this integral, because this is the accumulation factor in this equation. And so we wanna make sure that this is multiplied by the amount of the payments. And so then this will be equal to the integral from zero to two, of the amount of our payments, t to the fourth power, times e, and this time I'm going to write it as exp again until we finish this first integral. So we're gonna have exp, and then we're going to have the integral from t to two, and we're integrating delta t, which we are told is one divided by t, and so we have one divided by t, dt, and then we'll close that, and then write dt for our outside integral. And so the first thing that we're going to want to do to solve this integral is to evaluate this integral on the inside of our exponent. And we know that the integral of a function one divided by t is going to be equal to the natural log of t, right? If you have the integral of one divided by x dx, that is equal to the natural log of x plus c. And so if we use that rule, this will be equal to the integral from zero to two of t to the fourth power times exp and then we're going to have the natural log of t evaluated from t to two. And so then if we evaluate the natural log from t to two, we'll have that this is equal to the integral from zero to two of t to the fourth power times exp, and then we are going to have the natural log of two minus the natural log of t dt. And so then if we clean up our work here, we can simplify this answer here by using a rule that we know about logs, and that is if you have the log of the same base, which in this case we do, two natural logs, and you're subtracting them, you can divide their contents and combine them into one log. And so let me show you what that looks like here. We'll have that this is equal to the integral from zero to two of t to the fourth power times, and I'm gonna switch it to e now. We're gonna have e to the power of the natural log of two divided by t and then dt. And so then we know that e and the natural log cancel each other out, right? When you have e to the power of the natural log of x, that's just equal to x. And so in this case, we have e to the natural log of two divided by t. And so these are going to cancel out and we'll just be left with two divided by t. And so that will be our next step. This will be equal to the integral from zero to two of t to the fourth power times two divided by t dt. And so we'll clean up our work here once again. We can simplify this by noticing that this t is gonna cancel out with one of these t's, and so this t will be gone, and this will become t cubed, and so then we can rewrite this to be equal to the integral from zero to two of two times t cubed dt. And now all of a sudden, we went from a really ugly integral to a really nice integral that we should know how to solve pretty easily. And so this is just going to involve a simple power rule of integration, and so this will be equal to two times t to the power of four divided by four evaluated from zero to two. And so this would be equal to t to the fourth power divided by two from zero to two. And so then if we clean up our work one more time, we can evaluate this and this will be equal to two to the fourth power divided by two minus zero to the fourth power divided by two. And so this term right here is just going to be zero because zero to the fourth power is zero and zero divided by two is still zero. So this is zero. And then two to the fourth power is equal to 16. And so this will be equal to 16 divided by two, which means that our answer is going to be equal to eight. And so this is the future value of the continuous annuity in this problem. All right, and so that was the last example for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.